My name is Alex Shonturka. About uh, six months ago, one of my friends suggested that I come here and I give a talk. And uh, I said, sure. I didn't realize it was going to be titled Living the Dream, and I wondered whether anybody would turn up to it because it sounds incredibly arrogant. The idea that I am living the dream uh, is not exactly what it is. Living the dread, in many ways, is far more appropriate. I think what I was supposed to do is get up here and give some sort of inspiring tale about how I retired from law in 2010, which is true, and I started a business, which is true, and it took off, which is true, and it involves games, which is all true. But living the dread is really a lot more appropriate for a lot of reasons which we'll get into, mo much of which involves, uh, you know, if you want to achieve whatever your dream is, if you have one, uh, you have to take a ridiculous amount of risk, and that risk involves failure. When I say failure, I mean very public failure that everybody sees, and then how you get to the next step after you're willing to do that is to get up off your feet, scrape yourself together, and keep going. So when we're talking about failure, or dreams, or what have you, this here is actually an example of this. If I had sent an email to the people who were running this and found out that I was going to be giving a talk in front of all of you, I would have had slides. But I don't, so we're doing it live. So let me give you a little bit of an overview about who I am and how I got here. Uh, first of all, before we go too far, have any of you heard of a little game called EVE Online? Raise your hands, please. Okay. So have any of you heard of an entity called Goon Swarm within EVE Online? One. Perfect. We have to figure out how much backstory we have to go into with all this nonsense. So essentially, if you had to discover how you get your dream and where you get to go with what you want to do. In my case, it was to get out of law and be sort of the master of my own destiny, the classic entrepreneur CEO gimmick of this is what I want to do, this is where I want to be. You have to constantly go one step further. What does that mean? Um, I'm 37 years old. Uh, I was trapped in a law firm in Washington, D.C. doing white collar criminal defense. I was a gamer, lifelong gamer. I started playing D&D &D in the seventh grade along with Battletech uh, back in like 91 or something like that. And uh, I played online games, particularly I played EVE Online, World of Warcraft, all the usual stuff. Uh, decent board gaming experience, never really wanted to be a dev or anything like that, but uh, here I am. So what ended up happening was I got out of law, I moved to Madison, Wisconsin, and I started a website in response to some of the things that were happening with our community. And then things started getting weird. Uh, the Wall Street Journal did a profile on me a couple of years ago, and as of last week, Playboy did a profile on me. And now one of my close friends is about to announce that she's gotten a seven-figure movie deal today, which is really, really strange. So life gets weird if you take the risks and you put yourself out there. Uh, what have I learned from it, and how did we get here? I essentially run the largest gaming organization on the internet in MMORPGs. Uh, it's a guild, I guess, of about 40,000 human beings as part of a coalition in EVE Online. EVE Online is notable in the sense that it is a single shard game. That means that you have about half a million rats trapped in one cage. It's like Somalia in space. That's the best way to describe it. You know, Hilmar is the CEO of CCP, which is a gaming company in Reykjavik that makes in Iceland, uh, which makes EVE Online, has always been sort of groping towards how do you describe this thing, because you can't put Somalia in space in your marketing material, your press releases. It doesn't really go over very well. Uh, the reality is, is that EVE is a place where there are no rules in the territory that we have, where people can do anything to each other. And that means that people who do not realize the difference between reality and what people think things should be are swiftly extremely Terminated. It's just not the kind of place where bullshit survives on any level. So to have an organization, a gaming guild, as it were, survive and thrive in an environment like that over a decade, which is when we first got started, uh, you'll learn a lot the hard way about how human nature works. What does that have to do with me? What does that have to do with living the dream? Well, we'll get to that. So. In about 2010, I found myself in charge of this guild. I had been a number two guy. I was a spy master. In EVE, you can spy and do this metagame thing where you infiltrate other organizations in the game and you figure out what they're up to. And then you use that information to protect your people. 
I was uh, handed control of Goonswarm in uh, May of 2010, just around the time that I moved to Madison and got out of the law game. How did I get out of there? Mostly it was focusing on money, metrics, math, and science. That's the first thing. If you want to become independent in any way, and if you are all, I don't know, how many of you are wanting to run your own game company? Raise your hands. Okay, how many of you want to make your own game at the very least? I mean, you're a crafter con. I mean, you should be here for a reason. Okay, cool, right. So if you want to do your own thing, the first thing is that you got to figure out what all of your bullshit is. You have to figure out what you're lying to yourself about and you have to focus relentlessly on numbers and math and deliverables at all levels because the, you will find that in your pursuit of your dream, your desire to escape your career that you're bored with, or simply your desire to get your game published, or have other people like it and enjoy it, uh, that you will lie to yourself. Confirmation bias is always everyone's worst enemy. You will find data that will teach you the things that you think you want to know. Numbers and math will always show the right way. So if you have a goal and there's something that you can put a metric on it, you should focus on that and not listen to your own BS because you will drink your own Kool-Aid and then you will make a fool of yourself. Believe me, I have been there. The details, and what does this have to do with it? So there I am, I've quit law, I'm out, I've bought a house, I'm bored. It's Madison, Wisconsin, things are happy, I'm content. Content is the worst thing you can be if you want to achieve whatever dream you have. If you're in your comfort zone, you are dead. Worse than being dead, you're stagnant. Uh, you should always be suffering at some level. If you actually want to get something, you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to take risks. You've got to face plant and you've got to fail. Which means that if you're sitting there going like, I'm comfortable and everything is great, you're not learning. You're not getting any experience. If you're sitting there going, man, this is awful. I am so stressed out. I've taken this terrible risk. Everybody hates me. Things are just falling apart around me. And you're going, I will never do this again. I will never do this again. I will never do, do, do this again. You have learned a thing. That is where you want to be. Some people I know, some of my business partners refer to it as the crucible. Some people call it the box. Either way, you will know when you are in a world of pain and you are learning. But that also means you are achieving your objectives and you won't make those same mistakes again. So that's probably the first thing is, there I was, Madison 2010, in the comfort zone. Gotten out of law. Wisconsin's a hell of a lot cheaper than DC, which is where I was a practicing attorney first. And I was bored and I was realizing I gotta do something. So I found something I was mad about. You need a mission if you're gonna find whatever your dream is. Is your mission to make a good game? Why do you wanna have that game? Why do you wanna be a game designer? Why do you want to publish this product? You know, you need to know why. Once you figure out your why, then you can go forward. In my case, what it was, 2010, thereabouts, we were getting increasingly dissatisfied in our community with the quality of journalism, or lack thereof, relating to things that were happening in our little game, EVE Online. Now there's all this discussion about game as journalism, this or that. This is before the whole Gamergate nonsense. This has nothing to do with that. We had a large community of players who were interested in our game and nobody was actually talking about what was happening in the game in an accurate way. We could not rely upon the media. So on a lark, well, it wasn't really a lark. We were pissed off. That's what you say in public, is you say, this is a lark. We just threw a blog up there. It was no big deal. The reality is, is that I and all of, I'm, all of our people were furious with the way that we were being treated in the media. So we threw up a little blog. We started our own media website. Next thing we knew, that went big. We captured the market for people who wanted to read about EVE Online. This became the Matani.com. Uh, after that, the Wall Street Journal profiled us, the site got huge, and next thing I knew, I was facing massive failure again. There we were, out there in front of everyone, and I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Here I am, a retired attorney, and now I'm abruptly throwing up a hobby site that goes big, and suddenly I'm an entrepreneur, <laughs> and people are saying, you know, I'm reading these articles about me, and I'm basically going, that's not me, right? This is the challenge when you put yourself out there at risk. You know, people will look at you and go, holy crap, uh, I stole this line, I read it from some crappy article in Inc. magazine, uh, so I don't get credit for this, is, you know, if you're doing it right and you're getting out there and you're putting yourself out there and achieving your dream, whatever the hell that is, people will look at you and go, holy crap, that guy's riding a lion. He's so impressive, he's so great. The reality is, is that you're up there on the lion going, what the hell am I doing? I'm on a lion, how did I end up here, right? And all the, main all the time you have to keep the whole sort of calm, composed, you know, I've got my shit together look. Uh, but that's normal. That's basically what you should expect. So the site did well. And then again, we started going into the territory of contentment. It was 
doing okay, we had a business, but then we wanted to do something more. Again, you always have to keep pushing. So what we did was we leveraged our network. When I say we at this point, I'm not talking about me myself because none of these things that I'm talking about doing have very, very much to do with me personally doing anything on my own. This is a, a pretty critical thing. You always have a team, you are always working together, and you should always, whenever possible, speak in terms of a we or an R. Right, because it is a team effort. You can't do anything alone. If you have some sort of fantasy that you're going to be some sort of libertarian hero and pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you're screwed. You're never going to get anywhere. You might have, it doesn't scale, right? And your dream, if it's not a dream that is big, then it's not a dream. So always think about scalability, always think about having a team and give credit to where credit is, is due, essentially. So, what we ended up doing next was, okay, well, we have a website, it's popular, it's getting profiled, we've captured the online market, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we started leveraging our networks and contacts to find entrepreneurs and businessmen from outside. One of the nice things about EVE Online is it's a huge game that has people who play it that are primarily professionals from all areas of the world. And so you just go, okay, who knows things better than me? This is another one of those things. If you want to achieve anything, you have to find people who are smarter than you and listen to them and get your ego out of the way. You have to basically go, okay, based upon all the data and metrics I can find, this guy here knows about this stuff that I know nothing about. Now please tell me what to do and I will shut up and I will sit down and I will be meek and quiet and take notes and listen and implement. So that's a very, very important step if you wanna actually get anything done is find mentors, find somebody who knows for any aspect of it, you shouldn't be doing it yourself if you can find somebody else to do it who is better at it that you can learn from or ask for advice. We ended up expanding the website. We started creating uh, deals with many major companies in the gaming industry where we have essentially a player acquisition and retention model. Uh, now our community from its base in EVE Online uh, actively invades other games. Uh, the first one we did was H1Z1 with a Daybreak Game Company, which used to be Sony Online Entertainment. Uh, we have several other of these things in the work that have gone to contract now. And so now we don't just have a media website, we have a community that goes around between all of these games and sort of expands our reach, I guess you'd say, across the internet. And this is something that has never been done before, which is why it is terribly scary and it might fail horribly. In fact, the first time we did it, it was a goddamn disaster, politely speaking. Uh, we were trying to do a startup. Uh, we had a new business model. I mean, everybody has a, had a gaming blog at one point or another. That's old and cold. You know, you have an impression-based CPM revenue stream, whatever. That entire industry is dying as well, which is what put, a, put the pressure on us to be looking for something else to do. I'm not sure whether you guys have noticed, but almost all of the major gaming media websites are going under left and right. Raise your hand if you've noticed that, if you've seen that at all. Okay, at least some of you are aware of this, but basically the CPM impression model is dead and just a lot of people haven't really realized it yet. So that's another thing about pressure. So I've been running my mouth nonstop for 15 minutes, so before I run my mouth some more and talk more about dread and failure, which are such inspiring, uplifting topics. <laughs> this is great. Uh, any questions real fast before I run my mouth more? No. Good. Okay, you lost your opportunity. I'm going to keep running my mouth. There is no escape. There is actually escape. It's right through that door right there. At any moment, you're more than welcome to get up and run. Can you ask questions later? Yeah, sure. You can ask questions later if you like. Or you can just interrupt me. I don't bite much. But, you know. Um, let's see. <laughs> So let's talk about dreams. So you were wanting to ask a question. What is your dream? What are you after? Oh, man. Yep, you got put on spot. Sucks, doesn't it? You want to be a superhero. That's yeah. great. What's your plan to get there? Uh, encounter some sort of radioactive waste. OK. <laughs> well, you can implement that. If you execute, I don't really know whether you're going to have the objective that you wanted, but you can go there. Let's, uh, how about you? All, all things aside, I'm, I'm totally kidding. No, I, I would like to be. Are, are you sure? Are you sure you're kidding? You sure you don't want to be a superhero? I mean, it would be cool. It's that radioactive place will probably kill me. OK. Give me power. All right. A little unrealistic there. But um, no, I, I would like to run a multi-million dollar company someday. Okay. 
Well, all, actually, oddly enough, the superhero thing, assuming that you weren't going for crazy magical powers, you already see, what's his name, Phoenix Jones in Seattle is running around and doing exactly that. I mean, he has armor, and if you were an engineer, you could build yourself something to achieve that. Um, but yeah, basically, this is the point I'm trying to make here that I'm groping towards, is if you have a dream, if you have a goal, and other people tell you it's far-fetched, either it's being a superhero or wanting to run a company that makes millions and millions of dollars, one of the first things that you will encounter is people who will tell you you cannot do that, right? Let's say you can't. Now, even if it's a ridiculous example, a ridiculous example, like the superhero thing, well, let's think it through. You actually could do it because if you're an engineer, you would probably need to go the whole Iron Man route, especially because they do have, the military's already developing exoskeletons, you go through MMA training, you would do all these things, and you could actually achieve a lot of those objectives, and other people have. If you are putting yourself at risk, if you have a dream, there are a lot of people who will end up hating and resenting you. Why? They'll say that you're arrogant. They'll say that you shouldn't do it. They'll say that you can't do it. The reason is that they are happy in their comfort zone. They are happy where they are. And if you succeed and if you go out there and you actually prove that you can do the kind of things that you are dreaming about, it makes a lie of their entire life. And they might not think about this. They might not think this consciously, but it's in there. And they will do something that I call putting can't in your coffee. I knew a guy who every time we were doing something in business, he would say, oh, you can't do that. Oh, this will go wrong. Oh, this will not work because of this, whatever. Sever. Do not ever allow anybody to tell you that you cannot do something if it is something that you can have a rational, achievable, metrics-oriented way of accomplishing that goal. So, multi-million dollar company, you can totally do that. You get a business plan, you find mentors, you figure out how to get it done, and if at any step of the way, because everybody else, uh, not everybody else, but there's lots of other multi-million dollar companies out there. They all happen somehow, but you will find as somebody who wants to do a startup, or wants to achieve something, that people are always going to be trying to tell you that you can't. Crabs in a bucket. Uh, crabs in a bucket are only really a real problem. Have you guys heard the phrase crabs in a bucket before? It's the Midwest. Come on, you guys have got to heard this. Okay. Okay. Well, crabs in a bucket is a phenomenon where people who are in your social group or what have you will try to drag you down and keep you from succeeding. If they see you have a bunch of crabs in a bucket, it's a fisherman thing, right? Crabs go in a bucket. And then you don't actually have to put a top on the bucket. The reason you don't have to put a top on the bucket is because as soon as one crab tries to get out of the bucket, instead of working together to achieve an objective, they're all trying to tear the guys trying to get out down. So that's probably one of the first, this is just going to be a bunch of painful lessons learned, and I'll throw them out there, and you guys can take them or leave them. But if you're dealing with people who are telling you that you can't do something, sever. They're literally not worth your time. In fact, worse, once you start actually getting somewhere and doing something, you will find people who will try to bandwagon on your success and either put poison in your ear and say that now you can't do this without them, which is usually bullshit, or in general, they'll just try to be freeloaders. So you've got to learn how to sever. Once you start actually having some kind of success, you have to identify the people who are telling you you can't do something. You have to identify the people who are promising you things and not delivering. And you have to just be, be able to go like, well, if I want to achieve whatever it is, a lot of people out there who will drag you down. If you can't tell somebody no, you're screwed. That's just how it is. Um, failing upward is pretty much the most important thing. Uh, you will. You know, in my case, like started a media website, it was awful at first, it was a disaster, and then we got our feet ahead, you know, then we figured it out. Then we started doing this different business model, and it was a disaster, and it was awful, and then we figured it out. At every step of the way where you expect to do something, know going into it that it's going to be a disaster, plan for everything that can go wrong, hope for the best, but if you already know that you're taking a risk and you're probably going to face plant and go into the box of pain, it's not so bad because you just go, well, okay, another massive public failure. Here we are. Learned all these lessons. Then you get yourself together. Most people will just give up, right? Because we have this culture where people are afraid to fail. They're afraid to be ashamed. They're afraid to be humiliated, right? You cannot get anywhere unless you are willing to fail, be humiliated, and learn, and then pick yourself back up again. Um, let's see. Contacts and network. Network is everything. Absolutely everything. One of the reasons why I had a leg up and whatever the hell it is that I'm doing is because Massive Gaming Guild means massive network of contacts that I can leverage whenever I need them. 
never underestimate the power of people skills. You need to network. If you stick your nose in the air about being able to do things with other people or not developing social skills, then you're going to stay where you are. No one has ever achieved anything of significance except as a solo scientist, but even those don't actually exist because they've got a whole team of people around them by being you know, a man on an island standing up for himself, blah, 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 blah. Screw all that stuff. Um, let's see. <laughs> already talked about getting rid of time wasters and severing. Um, I would say that stress management is very important. Uh, if you get to a point where you are dealing with failure, if you are taking risks, if you are trying to do something that nobody's ever done before, then you need to accept that you are going to be just steam is going to be wafting out of your ears. You are going to be a walking pile of stress. Uh, exercise, yoga, meditation, pick one two or all three, you're going to have to do something to deal with the stress, figure out what it is, try to avoid drinking. If you don't have some sort of stress release mechanism when you start taking these risks, no matter how big your friend group is, you're screwed. And that's just the, the reality. Um, speaking of reality, and this is probably the final thing I'll say before I shut up, because thankfully we're getting to the point where you all have to, you all get to stop hearing my voice. Um, one of the greatest lessons that I've learned in business and in EVE Online, oddly enough, is that there is a huge distinction between, uh, in law we would call it de jure versus de facto, right? The, the, the letter of the law versus how things actually work in practice. And in the real world and in EVE, there are all these notions that people have about how the world works, most of which are crap. Right. There's these lies that everybody tells themselves about how people should be or how people ought to be or how government works. Like, for example, we live in a democracy. We live in a republic. Everybody calls it a democracy and nobody really looks into any of that. So you need to relentlessly focus on how the world is because that is the world that if you are taking risks and chasing whatever your dream is, that is the world you'll operate in. And if you buy into the BS of how things should be, you'll get obliterated because the world doesn't actually work that way. So uh, human nature can be a really nasty, ugly thing. You have to study it, you have to study psychology, especially if you're dealing with a business where you have to deal with people. Never worry about how things should be because should doesn't matter, right? Should is great, but you're trying to actually achieve something and that means you have to deal with the real. So whenever you find yourself saying either one, I can't, it's usually crap, or two, well, this should work, or I did this and this person should have done X, Y, and Z. That just means that you did not plan adequately and you did not prepare appropriately, and you did not look at the world as it is, and you can never move forward in the world unless you see it for what it is. And that's enough of me talking about five minutes. Any questions? Top three most read books for you. Oh, God. Um, well, I've always been a huge fan of, in terms of fiction, are we talking nonfiction or what? Nonfiction. Nonfiction. Well, the cheesy answer is 48 Laws of Power because it's actually a really crappy book. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it's a useful compendium. Uh, I like biographies. Uh, biography of Talleyrand is excellent. I think, I think that in general I would recommend reading biographies wherever possible. The best way to, to learn anything is learning from other people's mistakes. That's, a, that's the essence of wisdom. If you can learn from your own mistakes, that's great, but learning from other people's mistakes is even better. So uh, biographies of famous people who've done crazy, messed up things, uh, diplomats, leaders. I mean, if, you're, if you want to be a leader, if you want to be a CEO, right, if you want to build a business, then that's what you need to be studying, right? So I'd recommend, I, mean, I love Talleyrand. Uh, let's see, what else? <sighs> There's a really good book by uh, called uh, by name I forget the name of the author, um, but it's called Left Brain Right Stuff. Anything involving behavioral psychology or behavioral economics, I'll read all of it. So Dan O'Reilly's books, Left Brain Right Stuff is great because it's a study of leadership that has nothing to do with business book hooey, uh, and it discusses a lot of the the modern uh, science of psychology and applying it to business, right? Uh, so left brain right stuff is great because it talks about agency and control in situations because most people think that they don't have agency and control in many situations. Obviously you can't change the color of the sky every day, but people will be in a complicated situation and they will say, 
oh, I can't do anything about this. But the reality is, and this has been proven, that people have much more impact over outcomes than they give themselves credit for. So if you find yourself in a situation where everybody else is like, oh, we can't do anything about this, and you say, screw you, I'm just going to put my nose to the grindstone and work, you're going to have a massive impact on the outcome, and your competitors are just going to be going, who do who do who and you'll be fine. So that's a good one. Um, avoid any business book that tries to tell you that you know, any kind of thing that looks like a fairy tale, anything that doesn't have numbers or data, anything that claims to have big studies and data but doesn't actually show it to you, my favorite is good to great. It's a wonderful example. It's a great way to sell business books, but it's a fucking fairy tale. It's just useless shit if you've ever read it. They're handing it out in churches. Like if a church is handing out a business book, do you really want to learn about business from it? So anyway, that's basically it. You just have to, you just got to develop a bullshit detector. So that's a long discourse on books. I think I've got time for one, one more question before I shut up and wander off. Should anybody start playing EVE Online now, truthfully? Well, EVE Online has gotten a lot better. Um, I mean, like, do they even have a, a chance? It's like I've heard some of the stuff about new players just getting just pummeled. But. Well, we actually run an organization in EVE Online that is based around new players, right? New players are always a resource that people ignore in EVE Online. Uh, so in Goonswarm, there's an entire corporation called Karma Fleet, which is affiliated loosely with Reddit that is relatively easy to join. Okay. If you try to join Goonswarm and anybody says uh, that you have to pay a fee of however many million isk you're getting scammed, uh, don't listen to that, so I would suggest Karma Fleet. New players have a great opportunity to do things in EVE Online, and the Goon Swarm is a testament to that, because all we had back when we started that game was Rifters, which is a shitty ship that you get when you first start, and Hate. We had no skill points, we had no money, we had no resources, but we had each other, and we had organization, and we had commitment, and we had a community. And that was how we survived. So new players can always do something in EVE Online. That's a good plug for yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody.